What is up my friends and welcome back to Hobble Create. My name is Hobble and in the last episode we took a little break from automating big things like precision mechanisms and we automated lava. And in today's episode we're going to be doing some boring. I'm going to teach you how to make your very own tunnel bore so it means that we don't need to go caving anymore, we're going to have a machine that does it for us. So if you're new here then hit that subscribe button and remember to leave a like. And as always, down below you're going to find chapters so you can skip ahead, you can skip back, whatever your heart desires. So that's right my friends, today we're going to be building a tunnel ball. Now many of these designs have been floating around and everyone's kind of settled on a similar design, so that is the design that we're going to be building today. And honestly, it's not really going to be that expensive. The biggest cost is going to be the mechanical drills, but in one of the previous episodes I taught you how to automate andesite, so honestly, this shouldn't be a problem. And if you haven't seen that video, then feel free to go and check that out. So why don't we go ahead now and make a start. So we're going to build three of our mechanical drills out and we're going to build this up to four layers, making sure that they are all facing forward. Then around the back of this, on these bottom mechanical drills, we're going to be putting down three deployers. And we're going to worry about setting the filters a little bit later. For now, we're just going to make sure everything goes together correctly. Now on the top of these deployers, we're going to pop down some blocks that we're going to be using as our building block. And it can be any block you want, whatever design you want, we're just going to go for some stone bricks. But then on the front of these stone bricks, we need to set down another three deployers. Now on the side of our contraption, we're going to go to our third mechanical drill, and we're just going to pop down two of our building blocks. On the front of here, we're going to add in a deployer, and we're going to stretch this across four more deployers. And then for aesthetics, we're just going to add in another two building blocks on this side. Now on the bottom of these deployers, we need to add in another row of deployers, and they need to be facing towards us. Then we just need to mirror that on the top. And then finally, we need three more deployers right here. And that is the front of our tunnel ball completed. We can, of course, make the mining area a lot bigger a little bit later, but let's get it built first. So around the back, we're going to come to our middle mechanical drill. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, and five of our building blocks. And we're going to come down one. Then continuing on the top line, we're going to add one, two, three. And then from this third block, we're going to build it down twice. Then either side of this drop down that we've built, we're going to add one there and one there. That is every single building block that we're going to need to place. Now right in the centre, we have got this little block hanging down. We're going to skip one block and we're going to place a temporary block of any kind right here. On top of that block, we need to pop down a powered rail and we're going to pop on a cart assembler. And for good measure, why don't we pop down our lever now? Now let's take some mechanical ploughs and when we've got our upside down T, we're going to pop down three of our mechanical ploughs. And then the final thing that we need to add is some basic storage. Now we're going to be expanding this a lot in the future, but for now we just need some basic storage. That way we can now start completing our tunnel ball. And the next thing I want to tackle is our filters. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to set ourselves a new filter. We're going to throw in cobble deep slate or cobblestone. We're going to make sure that it's on the allow list. We're going to make sure that we're ignoring data and we're going to tick. And we're going to come to these bottom deployers right here. And these three all need to be using this filter. Now on the deployers above it, this right hand one here, we're going to pop as a redstone torch. The left one is also a redstone torch. And the middle one is going to be a powered rail. Now moving around to the front, we have got a 3x3 area in the centre here. And we are going to set all of these to dirt. The reason for that is if there is a water source or a lava source where we're going to place this down, it will then remove that source. So we've got three on the bottom, three on the centre and three on the top. Then using the same filters that we made for the back, we are gonna pop those on the outer layer. And what these ones will do is they will make a nice little protective shell for our minecart contraption inside here, and it's gonna make it a little bit safer. And now it's time for the fun part of gluing everything together. Thankfully, it shouldn't be too difficult. We know that all of these deployers, they need to be glued together. And the same for these ones at the front here. Then moving our way back, we're going to make sure that these drills are connected to this stone brick line here. And we're going to bring that one over to the other side. And then on this side, we're just going to connect everything together here. So now that we know this is all connected to the front, we can go ahead and connect that to these drills above. Then we're going to grab these bottom drills here and we're going to connect those all the way up to the top drills. Now from this mechanical drill, we are going to run it to this far back deployer over here. Up on top, we need to connect this line that we've got here all the way down to our chest. And then all we should need to do is connect these two together. They're all good. Make sure this back block here is connected and the same on the other side. And then what we can do from here is we can connect our mechanical plows. And then finally, we just need to make sure that all of our chests are connected. And by the looks of it, we might be good. 
If for good measure, we can just connect those as well. Now, in the next episode, we're going to be building an automatic unloader for all of the stuff that we've got coming in here. And to save ourselves one little step next time, we're going to go ahead and pop on a portable storage interface. And this can honestly be anywhere. But if you copy me here, then when we build our unloader, everything will be very easy to understand. Now, the very last thing we need to do is actually put in our minecart. But before we turn it on, we actually need to come to our storage and we need to pre-fill a couple of items in here. So we know that we're going to need some cobblestone, we're going to need a stack of dirt, we're going to need some powered rails and some redstone torches. Those are all of the blocks that are placed down by our deployers. And now assuming everything is going to work, let's go ahead and pull the lever. These should start placing the cobblestone down. We've got the blocks placed down at the front now, wonderful. And I think it's time that we take this down into the darkness and give this a go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our wrench, we're going to hold down crouch and we're just going to right click. That will give us a minecart contraption. So deep down in the cave now, I found myself a nice little clear area and I've placed down our cart assembler on top of some powered rails with a lever. Before we place down our contraption, we need to come around to the side, equip our wrench and we need to scroll this down to lock rotation. Then once we place in our cart contraption, we should be able to flick this lever and everything should start working. So once it's done one cycle of breaking blocks, it is going to stop and that is by design. You see, when you first place this down, you're going to need to give it a bit of a push. So coming onto the inside now, we're going to stand right next to our mechanical plow. We're going to hold down sprint and we're going to run at it, run at the machine. And that is going to set it in motion. And there we go. But what we shouldn't see is any blocks spilling out onto the floor. If you do see blocks spilling onto the floor, it means your storage isn't connected properly or your storage is already full. But as you can see, we are getting a lot of materials already, but we can take this one step further. So what we're going to do is we're going to crouch, we're going to right click it, we're going to pick it back up and let's head back up to the surface. And that's because we are not limited to a 3x4 digging area. And honestly, we wouldn't really find that many resources if we kept it at a 3x4. So with that in mind, we're going to come to this block right here and we're going to add out two. This is where we're going to place our new drills. And we're going to do exactly the same on the other side, but let's get one side done first. So right here, we're not going to place down a drill. That's because that's where our wall is going to go. But right here, that's free real estate, my friends. So we could probably add as many drills as we want. So let me add just a couple of drills now and I will be right back with you guys. Well, I did say just a couple. Now what I want to do is I want to show you what damage this can do down in the mines. So what I forgot to show you is on the back of all of those drills, I've put down a lot more storage because of course, more drills, more items, more storage required. So as always, what we need to do is run in here now and sprint and dive out of the way. And there she goes, my friends. She is off on an adventure to get us a lot of materials. So again, before you place it down, you want to make sure that your rotation is locked. Otherwise, this could be facing that way, that way. It, it could get messy. You could start breaking blocks that you didn't want broken. So let's go ahead and power off the lever and let's pop down our contraption. So in that tiny little test that we did, we filled up an entire double chest with cobble deep slate and tough. We got some diamonds, some copper, some gold. And we were starting on our second double chest where we even got some iron and zinc. Now zinc, very nice to have that. But nobody's got the time to go through all of these double chests and send them off to their own processors. You know, you can send them off to the smelter, the crusher, the washer, the haunter. Nobody wants to do that. That's why next episode, I am going to show you how to make yourself a factory. A factory that is going to automate the process of sending everything that we mine into their own designated area for processing. So if you did enjoy yourself today and you learned something new, then be sure to hit that subscribe button as you are not going to want to miss the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye guys.